Earth Science video time. This is Norris Teaches Science, another Earth Science Edition video starring me, Mr. Norris. I'm continuing talking about meteorology and different aspects to meteorology and weather. So today I present to you atmospheric temperature. So in this video, your goal is I can explain how temperature works within the atmosphere. Now we already talked about how temperature works going in the different layers of the atmosphere. If you don't remember that, go check out the last one talking about the atmosphere. And we talked about atmospheric layers and how the temperature trends work in the different layers of the atmosphere. Here we're just going to focus on temperature, say, in the troposphere. So what is temperature? Temperature is a measure of how hot or cold something is. Think about it. Is it hot or cold in your house right now or your apartment or where you live? Is it hot or cold outside? What? How does it feel? Now, temperature on Earth is influenced by solar radiation that is received. So the Earth is heated by solar radiation. And we talk about how that radiation gets to Earth in the astronomy sections of these videos. So incoming solar radiation, what can happen to it? Well, first thing could happen is reflection, where it, um, the radiation bounces off of the object. Um, so there's stuff in the atmosphere that the radiation hits, and it just reflected right back to space. There is scattering which produces a large number of rays that travel in many directions. Scattering is kind of one of the reasons why we see the sky is blue. It, there's multiple factors that factor in there, but scattering is one of the first things that does factor in. And absorption is when the object takes it in. So it absorbs it. It takes it in. It uses it. Now, what happens to the radiation in the atmosphere? I used this before when we talked about astronomy and incoming solar radiation, but 50% of, um, of all radiation that comes in from the sun reaches Earth's surface. 20% of it is absorbed by the clouds, and 30% of it is reflected or scatters back to space. Now, heat or temperature, heat energy, which we measure with temperature, um, we have to transfer it somehow, and there's three ways to do it. You have conduction, which you see right here. It means direct t contact or touching. That's conduction. Um, convection, we talked about convection um, back in um, plate tectonics because convective currents in the mantle made plates move. But convective here is hot air goes up. Cold air goes down. It kind of creates a little rotation. Convection is actually a way that you could, um, in the winter months, you could, if you live in an apartment complex and you live, say, on the top floor, you wouldn't have to use a lot of, of your own heat because you're going to get the heat from the apartments below you. I did that um, my first couple of years teaching. I lived in a apartment. I lived on the second or third floor and because I moved between two. And in the winter months, I did not actually have to use my heat that much because the apartments below me like to heat up, make it really hot in their apartments. And their heat rised into my apartment. So I didn't have to use my heat that often. Now in the summer, I had to use my AC a lot because cold air falls. Uh, and then radiation, that's the waves through space, and that's how you, we get the um, heat from the sun. But even in, say, a campfire or a light bulb, you can feel the heat waves coming off of that object. Now, why do temperatures vary on Earth? We're talking about in the troposphere here. Why do temperatures vary on Earth? Well, altitude. Remember, as you go up in the troposphere, temperatures are going to decrease. Uh, geographic position. If you're closer to the equator, it's going to be warmer than it is at the poles. Cloud cover factors in. Um, cloudy days are usually colder. Ocean currents. Um, we talked about them back in the hydrosphere. Warm currents bring warm temperatures. Cold currents bring cold temperatures. Uh, the heating of land versus heating of water. Land heats up faster than water. Um, now, altitude, I kind of mentioned it. Temperature decreases as you go up in the troposphere. That's why if you go from the base of a mountain to the top of a mountain, it gets colder, and that's why some mountains are covered in snow permanently year-round. A geographic position, it is usually warmer or hotter near the equator. The poles are usually cold. Um, the average temperature decreases as you increase in latitude. That means as you go 
from the equator to the poles, your average temperature is going to decrease. But there is fluctuation with seasons because of the tilt of the axis. That's why summer months are usually having more warmer averages than, say, winter months. And again, I mentioned it, heating of land versus heating of water. Um, and land heats up faster than water. That's why you can go to the beach and the land can be burning your feet in the summer and the water can be nice and cold. Uh, land also cools down faster than water. Same thing. Say you're at the beach at night. The water is going to feel warmer than the sand because the sand is land and it um, cools down faster. And then cloud cover. We, we talked about this with something called albedo. Albedo is the fraction of total radiation that is reflected from any surface. And this is factored in with daytime cloud cover and nighttime cloud cover. So if you have a daytime cloud cover, temperatures are lower than on a clear day because the heat can't get through. Um, so it can't reach the surface. It can't warm up the surface. So it's going to be a colder thing. The clouds are reflecting radiation back to space. Nighttime cloud cover, that means temperatures are going to be higher because kind of, the clouds kind of act like a blanket and it traps the heat in and reflects it back down towards the earth. Kind of like um, sleeping with a blanket. The blanket keeps you warm. Nighttime cloud cover is like the blanket. It keeps you warm. But this is how temperatures vary and temperatures in the troposphere in the, um, of the atmosphere. Hope you learned something today. And this is Mr. Norris and he is signing out for this video.